The series resonant bifilar coil has several unique properties. For one, you can make very high currents with it and also very high voltages. But more importantly is that when the series resonant bifilar coil is tuned into its resonant frequency, the impedance of the induction and the capacitance of the coil are cancelled out and it leaves only the wire resistance. And this makes it perfect for making use of impulse electricity. In April 2019, I released a video called Radiant Power Produced by Solid State Tesla Hairpin Circuit. In this video, I make use of series resonance in the L2 coil together with the C2 capacitor. And in this video, I will go more into detail about how that all works. Enough for now, let's continue with the video. Enjoy. In my previous video, I talked about the dielectric field of the bifilar coil and that the strength of the dielectric field depends on the voltage. And to increase the voltage, series resonance is one of the methods. Basically, we've got a coil on one side and a capacitor on the other side. The coil is related to the current that is related to the magnetic field. So in the coil is a magnetic field energy stored. And the capacitor is related to voltage. And the dielectric field is stored in the capacitor. Now with a resonance, series resonance, the electric energy is going back and forth between the magnetic field and the dielectric field. And I wrote them here in this graph against the time. Red is the voltage and blue is the current. One thing to note is that when that current is zero and the voltage is maximum, you could say, and this is absolutely true, that there is no magnetic field, the current is zero, and there is only a dielectric field. The voltage is maximum. But keep in mind, this is a changing magnetic field. So the change of flux of the magnetic field lines is maximum when the current is zero. So the change in the magnetic field from one to the other is maximum when the current is zero. With series resonance, the magnetic field and the dielectric field are 90 degrees separated. There's a phase difference. That means that the magnetic field is never fully present when the dielectric field is fully present. And this is the condition needed to produce electricity. Because then the current and the voltage are in phase. The dielectric field and the magnetic field are joined together, fused together. And this is what electricity is all about. The combination of these two fields. So with series resonance, we don't have that. We don't have electricity. We don't have electric power. But when you inject the negative voltage impulse into it, suddenly the series resonant coil that is impulsed can produce power. And I show this in the video released in April 2019 called Radiant Power Produced by Solid State Tesla Hairpin Circuit. We looked at this series resonance from the perspective of a single coil and a single capacitor. But we are talking about a bifilar coil. A bifilar coil has capacitance. It has increased capacitance by the voltage difference uh, between the windings. When we now look at this energy transfer between the capacitor and the coil, the capacitor also represents 
the dielectric field of the coil. And this is the whole goal that we're, we're, we're looking for. We want to charge up the dielectric energy in the coil. And we do this by making the voltage in the capacitor really high because the voltage is what charges up the dielectric field of the pancake coil. And the capacitance of the coil isn't that big by itself. This coil has around 600 picofarads. So to charge up those 600 picofarads, we need high voltages to make it really energetic and strong. Here we have a bifiler pancake coil. It's got two layers. It is series connected with the red from the inside to the blue winding on the outside. And the way I hook it up is always connect the outside rim, this is the outside rim, to ground. And the inside rim is to the series resonant capacitor. This makes the center part of the coil uh, uh, the most resonant, the highest in voltage and current. And this is logical because here is the magnetic field center and not on the outside. This is the tuning capacitor of the series resonance. Am I making it really big? It takes a lot of time to charge up and therefore the frequency will be very low of the resonance. Instead, we can take a much smaller capacitor. This is only one nanofarad instead of the 680 of this one. It's a much smaller capacitor. If we hook this one up and make the, the system series resonant, then the same happens. The magnetic field energy of the coil will exchange with the dielectric field energy of the capacitor. But because this capacitor is much smaller, only one nanofarad, and the coil itself is 600 or 500 picofarad, so only a factor two smaller, the dielectric field will be also mostly concentrated into this coil. And more energy is uh, related to more voltage, as explained before. So the voltage will be uh, easier to get high in the capacitor but also in the coil. And this is what we want. This is what we need. Of course there is a balance. With a big capacitor you will get very low frequencies. And with a small capacitor you will tune this series resonance system to a much higher frequency. The goal is to keep looking for high voltage because the capacitance of this coil is small and the only way to make the dielectric field strong in this coil is to get the voltages high enough. Now we need to talk about resistance. Now what is this resistance and what does it do? Resistance is basically the uh, property of the wire that uh, turns the electrical energy into heat. That is a loss of energy. It will uh, dissipate and it will be gone forever. You won't reclaim it. And that is why I use pure copper wire. If you want to impulse a coil, you will run into a problem. Because you've got inductance, you've got capacitance and both these two will create impedance, which is, uh, impedance is like a uh, frequency dependent resistance. Look into it if you want to, but I'll keep it simple. The impedance is canceled out. And therefore the only resistance the impulse encounters is the wire resistance of the coil. And that is really nice because an impulse is slowed down by resistance. So by making the impedance equal to the wire resistance very small, the impulse is able to be very short in duration and thereby very high in voltage. A capacitor 
also has equivalent series resistance, ESR. And you can reduce the resistance of a cap by putting them in parallel. What this does is that you basically have the resistance of each capacitor in parallel and therefore it drops down to a much lower value. At the same time, the values of the parallel capacitors are added up together. So this is 10 nanofarads and times 5 makes 50 nanofarads. And this way you can tune your circuit really easy because if it's too much, you just remove a capacitor. I actually made a board for this. This is a switchboard made of parallel capacitors. All these capacitors can be switched in and out by these switches. This is a row of 10 100 picofarads. Here are 5 times 10 nanofarads and here's 10 times 1 nanofarad. And in this way I can choose any capacitance I want really fast, really easy. And uh, yeah, it works great. I'm really happy with it. A lot more information on series resonance can be found online. So I didn't go into all the details. If you want to learn more, just search around. There's a lot more to be learned. And very important, we talked about the role of resistance. The whole story about impedance can be left alone because it is cancelled out and only the wire resistance of the coil is left. And that is already very low. You need to keep resistance low in the whole circuit by using thick copper wire but also the connections need to be low in resistance. We talked about tuning the series resonant coil by changing the capacitance. We could also change the inductance of the coil but that's a little bit tricky with a bifiler coil. That's why I talked about tuning with a capacitor. But there's more to it than that. If you look at the impulse generation coil which is L1 in the radiant power circuit, the frequency when it's really high the coil L1 can't produce really high uh, intensity voltages. If the capacitor is really small we get a very high frequency but this has a little bit of a problem with it because the impulse also will be low in voltage due to the high frequency. Then you could also tune with a very big capacitor the frequency will go way down but then you're again limited by the impulse because the impulse then with a low frequency will be very big. So you need to balance it out. You need to, to find a spot where you have maximum impulse voltage and maximum resonant voltage. As explained the dielectric field of the coil is dependent on the height of the voltage. All this combined makes it able to tune it. I also showed you how to reduce the resistance even further by placing capacitors in parallel. The ESR of the capacitor is lowered that way, so it can work with these very fast impulses. And talking about impulses, the next video I will go into impulse generation, how that all works. For the impulse, is the longitudinal waveform. Donations are always much appreciated because this work is all open source, meaning that I will share all the information that I gain with the community that is interested, and that is you. You can fund this open source research by giving a donation on my PayPal account that is listed below in the description of the video. If you have questions, you can do so in the comment section below. Please subscribe, like and share this video and turn on notifications if you want to get a personal call when my next video is out. Thank you for watching. See you next time.